3DS Max news for March 2023. What a month! We not only had the new Max 2024, but we had a lot of new scripts released for free, ChatGPT integrated in 3ds Max, new plugins and way more. So let's just start with a fast overview of what we had in Max 2024. In modeling, we have a new Boolean modifier. The solver performs better than before on complicated geometry and allows for new workflows. Even for the first time, you can switch between Mesh Booleans and VDB Booleans. We have a new Philotaxis method inside Array Modifier, bringing natural array distributions. And we have a new Material Editor! It's fully ported to Qt, it's faster than ever, it's possible to create compounds. The modifier list has been ported to Qt and has a certain gene. A total new color management system in 3ds Max allows to have your colors under control. Also news in animation, we have a new list controller that is Qt based and allows to have multiple animation layers, isolate them or blend them. Motion path has been updated to work with all list controllers and handles are better than before. But that's not all, we had as well a new Max 2A 5.6.1 giving support for Max 2024 and Arnold 7.2. Bring support to the new color management system in 3ds Max, the new material switcher and the new package compound that we have on the new material editor. Arnold itself had improvements on the sky system, faster rendering with lots of lights and the star is this new distance shader that you can see on these video examples. The distance shader is similar to what is known as B-Ray distance text that Arnold was missing. Remember that on my channel you have a longer video covering this new release, here we had something very short. It's been the best video on my channel so far, we are getting close to 50,000 views in only 3 days, so thank you to a lot of people that are sharing and watching this video. And for my Patreons, this month we had 4 new exclusive videos, one is covering the new boolean modifiers with tips and tricks, another is covering the new array modifier improvements, and 2 more tutorials covering type flow techniques and V-Ray scatter. So thanks a lot to all my Patreons. I had as well a poll on my YouTube community tab. Normally I add there some information, questions, things like that. We had over 300 votes and looks like the most favorite new thing in this 3ds Max 2024 has been the Boolean modifier, followed very closely for the new material editor. Let's start strong with the new plugins and scripts from this month. And we had Razor, an excellent plugin created by my friend Paul Fuller, and it's now free, totally free. Razor is used to prefactor geometry, and the cool thing is that you can draw exactly where you want your cut. And it can cut multiple objects at once. Under the hood, it's effectuating different checkings to make sure that the new geometry has no errors, so all the time the cut will work. You can do as many undos as you want independently from the 3ds Max undo system. And I cannot say enough good things from this script, I use it in so many productions, like on Game of Thrones, Guardians of the Galaxy, and way way more. I work every time that I need detailed destruction, I use Razor. So I will say it one more time, it's now totally free. ChatGPT is all the rage these days, and obviously we had a version working for 3ds Max. Joker Martini released a proof of concept integrating ChatGPT in 3ds Max. You can download it as well totally for free from GitHub, and you will need Max 2022 or newer. It's a concept, and Martini is looking for feedback to get improvements. So far, you add your prompt, and you can choose if you want to generate the Max script code or a Python code and if you want to visualize the code or directly executing the code in 3ds Max. For the examples I can see, it works pretty cool. Sydney Sati released FumeFX 6. It's a major, major overhaul of this popular fire and smoke simulation system for 3ds Max. Now, it's not only about fluid simulations, FumeFX 6 become a node-based interface for all types of particles. You can create all types of particle setups, Boronoi solvers, rigid bodies and soft bodies, drive by bullet, and particle advection using a smoke, obviously. Over 140 nodes to create all types of procedural madness. Sivas Technologies released a new iteration of his veteran particle system in 3ds Max. It's version 7.3, and they turbocharge what they call MEL. Not confused. Don't get confused with the. Uh, scripting language in Maya. MEL is a new language scripting oriented for VFX introduced in Thinking Particle 7.2, but now with way more options. 
ML is multi-threaded, it's accelerating every aspect of thinking particles, and with this new language you will be able to access any part of TP, customizing it for your needs and create your own TP nodes based on this ML new language. Tieflow, the other particle system in 3ds Max, received as well multiple updates implementing the Tie Actor IK Helper and Actor IK abilities, allowing for better, more refined crowd behaviors that will interact with the environment. And we had a last update just today. I was writing this and I, I saw a new update, and this one is pretty cool. Alembic exports has been really, really improved. Now the, all the transforms are kept with Alembic, so all the caches will be orders of magnitude lighter than before, before Typhlow was creating a big mesh from all the geometry, not keeping in mind the transform systems. With these, uh, caches will be way, like 10, 20 times smaller or more, and all the UV channels and ID materials will be kept. There has been improvements in other areas, like the new seed per tile for terrains, and high normalization for terrains as well, and other stuff. Spline Dynamics released Random Mixer. Random Mixer allows to randomize everything. It will create variations on your scene, model, or characters, and you can manage them with state assets. You can populate your scene with different models, randomize textures or materials, randomize positions, add variations for lighting and cameras, everything is possible. It's ideal to explore variation concepts for your interior scenes, create NFT projects, brainstorming new possibilities for decoration, motion graphics, and yeah, a lot more. It costs $50 and you can give it a try with a trial version. Double B Parallax released new collections to create his popular fake interiors. You just need a 2D plane and the OSL map will create the parallax effect taking into account your camera position to display a 3D interior. Parallax provides a rich collection of different bundles for apartments, kitchens, office and retail shops. Now on this new version includes as well a box helper, so it's not using OSL. You can you can decide if you want to use the OSL version or this new box helper using exactly the same maps. The advantage that it has is that you can interact directly with this box in the viewport and you can create uh, shadows and reflections. We have a very complete article from Chaos Group on a new blog post from developers talking about developer stuff. On this one, they talk about the work they did on V-Ray 6.1, moving all materials to QT interface, and how with that they achieved four times faster drawing speeds thanks to the max conversion to QT for materials. And now, thanks to Max 2024 porting all the material editor itself to QT, this will be even faster. Smart Extrude is one of the best additions for me for modeling in 3ds Max, makes everything way faster, but sometimes you will wish that you can turn this off. Shang Soeun created a simple script that allowed to turn on or off this smart extrude. It's totally free and you can download it from his page. This month we had the Game Developer Conference with different conference in 3ds Max and Maya. Stefan Ivanov was talking about creating a digital identity that is available now on YouTube if you want and you have the links on the description of this video below. 3ds Max is only for Archbeat, our favorite section. It's better than ever, I think, this month, so many things to cover. I have to start with this awesome robot model. This robot has been done by Fausto De Martini, and the time lapse has been done by Chang Soeun. It was to showcase the new Boolean system in 3ds Max 2024, and yeah, you can see it. What an incredible work by Fausto, he creates so cool stuff. And yeah, the Boolean, the new Boolean in 3ds Max 2024, it's so much fun to use. Uh, if you didn't try it yet, give it a try because awesome stuff. This month we had an incredible challenge called Endless Engines, run by Punisher, with thousands of artists from all around the world creating awesome content with different softwares, obviously. We had a subscriber, Mikhail Schliardik, I hope that I pronounced your name right, that he did this edit that you can see with different versions that he found for this contest done mostly with 3ds Max. Thanks a lot to Michael to create this edit and congratulations to all the people that participate on this challenge. This specific one is coming from Michael itself. He posts this on the Typhlow group in Facebook and he commented how everything was done in Typhlow, including the terrain, the scattering, the fog and the crowds. 
and how they even compare it with Cinema 4D particle performance being the Tyflow version two to three times faster than Cinema 4D. We know that Tyflow is very fast, but other people maybe doesn't know that. If you are up for another challenge, let's remind everyone that we have the Rockies with the Rick V contest and yeah, it's finishing in one week. So you have one last week. There are huge prices with workstation, Wacom tablets, free licenses for different categories. And there is already a lot of cool stuff done. Casanova Wikaxono created a building destruction simulated in 10 minutes uh, using Typeflow and you can download the setup for $7 in Gumroad. Pedro de Leo created a new identity using Typeflow to create all the cloth and I found it really interesting. Typeflow cloth is very fast and as you can see can create very nice results. Still in Typeflow, Sergey Mopchan created a very cool setup of an ant colony that is searching for food while avoiding collisions and the ants will follow the path that other ants did previously, making it very realistic. You can download this setup for free from Sergey Gumroad together with a lot of other cool setups that Sergey has been uh, publishing on his Gumroad, so to learn is a very cool material. We covered the Rings of Power opening done in Typeflow some time ago, but this month J.A. Duran was able to add a breakdown and a detailed information how he created all of that. He displayed how he used a setup based on the surface force operator with a secondary system to create clusters, using physics for most of the shots, using a lot the tight cache retiming to create this nice soft result, and he even used the Typeflow beta because when he was doing this, the pro version was not yet available, and he said that it was very solid. Chaos Group created an article about Olivier Kentner and his work to illustrate the ocean cleanup job. He used V-Ray, Phoenix, and Typeflow to visualize how this company is collecting trash from the ocean with very cool shots that he created. This is a very cool shot by Mohamed Gadimi. I think it's awesome, rendering Corona render and the rain was done in Typeflow. He commented that he never did uh, VFX before, but man, very good job. We got a lot of activity on the stack group in Facebook and a lot of animations this time. We had from Manuel Alberto Avila created his cool wolf character using biped. Then we have David Penfound that has been experimenting creating a realistic muscle system using Typeflow. And I think that for what we can see, it works very nicely on this horse using tight cloth with collisions and tight relax. Norberto Aguilera shared these different animations and is sharing most of these max files with everybody for free. So thank you a lot, Norberto. Very cool stuff. Paul Neal has been posting a lot too. He shared this awesome bird legs rig. Awesome stuff. All the rigs from Paul are great. And also he posts a screen captures with different workflows and notations for different areas in 3 d Max. It goes from rendering, animation, modeling, and I collect some of them on my website so they don't get lost on Facebook. I think that they are very worth it if you are learning or sometimes you can discover new stuff. And more cool stuff from ILM. We have a Stefan Hampel that shared this very cool underwater scene done in 3 d Max and V-Ray is inspired in Avatar The Way of Water. You can even download a breakdown of this scene with some 3D models that he shared for $25. We have an article talking about Susume no Toshimari from a studio that is called Comics Wave Films, or this is what I think because I had to translate the website, I think it was in Japanese. Uh, you can translate it to, uh, into English. It's a CG movie from a Japanese director with a very nice 2D look. I love the look of this movie. I will try to find it because it looks pretty cool. And on the article, they talk that the main tool was 3 d Max. They use as well tools like After Effects, Photoshop, and they use Houdini for some specific uh, BFX. I think that the result is astonishing, awesome. I, sometimes you don't even know if this is 3D or not. Uh, super cool stuff. 
Make presented his reel for 2023. Make, as you know, they always use 3D Max. It's always high quality work and they use a lot, a lot Typeflow. Actually, Tyson Ibele, the created from Typeflow, was working on Make a couple of years ago. And we will end the month with a cool advertising for Autodesk presented during the Oscars. It has been directed by Ryan Reynolds with his company for advertising and they talk about a legendary filmmaker that is called Otto Deschinsky that it will have a plot twist and I found it pretty cool, uh, funny, funny advertising to showcase a software company. During this advertising you can see some 3ds Max shots done by G. Spitella uh, showcasing his Torque uh, BFX core, so super cool stuff all together. And I think that that's all guys. It has been a crazy month, so many stuff. Let me know in the comments what is the favorite stuff from this month. And yeah, remember, you can subscribe, you can share it with your friends, you can give a like. And thanks a lot to all my Patreons. Without them, I will not be able to do all this stuff that takes some time. Thank you a lot, guys, and see you soon. Bye.